So I've been waiting. And I've been waiting. And I've been waiting. And I've been waiting. But guess what? It's finally here! Rapid fire! In this video, I'm gonna show you everything that the receiver comes with, and I'm gonna show you its functionality. Let's get started. All right, so the first main thing that of course you get is the rapid fire unit itself. It literally installs just like any other Fat Shark module for the most part. Uh, so I don't think you need to see me snap this in here. Uh, there are a few catches when it comes to installation having to do with power. There are a few options and we'll get into that as I get all the bits and pieces out of the box. So for my install, I have the main unit and I also have the cover that I'm using for the dominators. Let's get into the box that I opened because I couldn't wait to check this thing out and we'll see everything else that we have in here. Uh, it also comes with a cover for attitudes so if you're rocking the attitudes you can run the rapid fire. I think that's pretty neat that we are actually starting to get modules that are designed to be compatible with the Attitude series of goggles. I think they're a great set to get started with and to be able to have a third party module is just gonna make them even better. Uh, just of course, you know, like all the dominators that most of us use. Uh, but anyway, you get a cover so you can install them right up in your Attitudes and there's a few more pieces in here. You just dig in here a little bit. And as I mentioned earlier, with power, this does come with a module so you can steal power from the head tracking bay. And it also comes with a ribbon cable to deliver that power from the head tracking bay. But if you've noticed, mine isn't installed like that. Uh, as a matter of fact, mine's installed just like any other module that you would ever install. I don't have any extra cables or anything. Well, what kind of sorcery is this? What in the heck is going on? Uh, well, there's actually a modification you can do to the Fat Sharks. Uh, it's called the L1 inductor mod, if that's something you're looking for. If you're feeling brave enough to physically remove pieces from your goggles, uh, there is actually a component that if you remove from the board, uh, it's there really as part of best engineering practices, but it can be removed. Uh, just search for Fat Shark Rapid Fire Hack or Rapid Fire Internal Modification or Power Modification or something like that. You should see what I'm talking about. Um, but you do have to hit your Fat Sharks, the board with a soldering iron. That might turn some people off. Um, but that's exactly why they give you a few other parts. So if you don't want to do the L1 inductor mod, you can always run this ribbon cable across the goggles. And so you can adhere that across the front side of the goggles to get power from one bay to the next. Alternately, you could install this cable internally in the goggles if you want to do like the LaForge type install. Um, but after you stick the ribbon cable on there, they give you a couple of stickers so you can cover up the cable. And look at that, they actually even give you a sticker for your patch too. That's kind of cool, right? Let everyone know you're rocking rapid fire. But they should be able to tell by the cover alone. Alright, let me get this thing jammed back in there and then I'll fire up the goggles and we'll go over some of the functionality. All right, that's it, module's back in. I'm gonna switch to the overhead and let's figure out how to use these things. All right, let's just get these bad boys fired up here. And as you can see, we are greeted by the rapid fire logo. And one thing that I think is incredibly awesome about these goggles is they are always going to power up in the last state that you left them. So by default, they're gonna go to the last channel and this is your main screen here where you can select in between all your bands and your channels. All the bands are on top, so you have all your standard bands, including X, which X is designated as your favorites, and you can see underneath we have the individual channels, 1 through 8, on all of the corresponding bands. Now, if I move my joystick over here, it is going to change the channels and or bands to correspond with the movements of the joystick. So if I click to either the right or the left on my joystick, it is going to change the band. If I click up or down on my joystick, 
it's going to switch in between the individual channels. So real quick and easy, we don't even need to dig into anything if we're going to change the channels on the goggles. Just hit your joystick, boom, channels changed, done deal. Well, that's all great if all you need to do is change your channels, but what if you need to get a little bit deeper into the configuration? Well, that is equally as easy to access. Just simply push the joystick, and we are now going to open the menu system for the rapid fire module. You can see our first item is our band. Let me just click it again. Our first item is our band, and if we click up or down, it'll allow us to change our band selection. So we can pick anyone that is in here, basically IRC or Fat Shark, all the way through low band. They even have the favorites designated in here as part of the band as well. So that's your first item is your band. Second item is channel, same thing. I can scroll up and down and I can change my channel. No big deal. Let's go over to our next menu item by clicking right, and we're gonna get into the tools. We have a spectrum analyzer, we have favorites, and we have calibration. If you want to select the spectrum analyzer, just pull it up in the menu and push select on the joystick, and you're gonna see the goggles are going to scan to try to see what's going on in the area, and you're going to get a graph, a readout, as the goggles analyze, well, I guess wireless signals in the area. Anything on 5.8 gigahertz? Uh, how do we get out of here? Let's see if I remember. I believe you push the joystick to the left and it brings you back into your menus. Uh, so now we're in tools again. As I click through, we can bring up our favorites menu. We can also go into calibration. I'm not going to go into calibration because I do not want to calibrate. Uh, but on favorites, we'll give you a look-see here. We'll see that there are all the bands that are currently saved in the favorites menu. I click out of here. I'm going to go right again. Now we are in RF mode. There are two different options. There are There is the rapid fire mode and also legacy mode. Rapid fire mode is going to do the rapid fire, crazy, mojo, magic, whatever the heck it does in order to give you awesome reception. And on legacy mode, it is going to use the receiver more as a standard diversity module as opposed to using custom magic. Uh, and the last item in here, oh, I'm sorry, there's actually two more things to go. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Uh, right here, we have antennas. You can select which antennas you'd like to use in the module. You can use both. You can use only the lower or only the upper. Uh, maybe you're going long range and you have a patch and you want to stay on the patch, so you could select that here. Or maybe you only want the omnidirectional. I don't know, but you do have the ability to be able to specifically select one of the two antennas. Uh, and then after that, we have the OSD. Actually, now there's two more items. Uh, so inside the OSD, we can turn it off, we can lock its position, or we can have it show RSSI. Uh, because I use the Betaflight OSD, I really don't need this to display the RSSI here. Uh, really, I just use the fuzz and the goggles. If it's too fuzzy to see, I know my RSSI isn't good, and I need to do something to improve my signal. Pretty straightforward with that. Uh, but anyway, so the OSD, it can be off, you can lock its position, or display the RSSI. Our last item in here is status. This can be fairly important. I'm just going to click the joystick and bring it up. This is going to show you your version of firmware. And when you see where it says brain, that's actually your rapid fire version. I am currently up to date on version 107. Uh, the rapid fire is 102. I don't know exactly what that means. Maybe that's the algorithm that they're using to analyze the signal. I don't know. Uh, underneath that, there is a power meter, so you can see the voltage that the module is operating at. As you can see, I am currently running at 5 volts, and where it says low power, it's indicating no, meaning I'm good, and I do not need to do anything alternate to power my module. Okay, I think that I have just generally and adequately covered all the features inside the rapid fire module.
This thing is really simple and super easy to use. Honestly, I think the installation is the hardest part. Um, and really, I don't think it matters how you're installing them. If you're trying to put the sticker on the front, uh, if you're going to be installing the ribbon cable internally, or if you're doing the inductor mod, um, I really think that that, yeah, that hands down is the more, most difficult part of running the rapid fire module is going to be the power. Um, but if you're coming from LaForge, it shouldn't be a big deal. If you have a buddy that's good at soldering, the inductor mod should not be a big deal. Uh, there's tons of resources out there for this. I should have done a video when I modified my goggles, but I was too excited and I didn't. It is what it is. All right, there you guys go. In a nutshell, there's the rapid fire module. I hope you enjoyed this video. Maybe if you did, I can convince you to click on that subscribe button. Maybe you'll ring the bell. And how about that like, too? I'm not asking for too much, am I? I'm kind of needy today, aren't I? Well, anyway, if you have some time, maybe check out one of my sponsors, Hot Dog FPV. Best sponsor in the world. I love those guys. That's about all I got for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.